Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a story wala, an accomplished professional from India, Mr. Amin Haq. Amin, welcome to the show. Uh, Amin is the founder of Storywalas, and we'll talk about Storywalas uh, in more detail. He's a business storyteller and a story coach. So, Amin, let's start with Storywalas. Tell me about this venture and what was your motivation to start it? I, I wish I had an epiphany story to share with you, but mm-hmm. it didn't happen that way. Okay. Uh, but when I look back, the dots do connect. Mm-hmm. So growing up, I was a shy and reserved kid. Mm-hmm. And to help me overcome that uh, reserved nature, my mom, who was a teacher and a college lecturer, she enrolled me into theater and elocution mm-hmm. and uh, debate competitions and poetry recitation. And all mm-hmm. of these things helped me quite a bit. And out of all of these, I fell in love with theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stage gave me a lot of confidence because I, you know, there was a mask on my face. Correct. I, I was not playing myself, but someone else. Mm. And I fell in love with theater, but I also come from middle-class India where you don't mm. choose theater as a career choice. Yeah. Uh, you choose what you are eligible for or what your marks make you eligible for. Huh. Uh, so uh, I, I chose a career in advertising okay. and that is also storytelling. You mm. tell stories of brands. Absolutely. And in the evenings, after office hours, I used to do theater. Mm. So advertising by day, theater by evening, two different kinds of storytelling mm. uh, and working with narratives. Mm. Doing that for a long time, I realized that stories have a lot of power. Mm-hmm. But we don't leverage that power mm. as much as we can in a range of situations and application areas. Mm. And I was excited by the possibility of taking it to schools and working with teachers and help teachers become better storytellers. Mm. So it's with that desire that we started story. Amazing, amazing. So my logical next question to you, I mean, is what makes a good story? A whole lot of things, but uh, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have started confusing storytelling with oratory, with public speaking, Mm -hmm. with uh, slick social media campaigns. Mm -hmm. But to me, you know, it's about going back to fundamentals. Authenticity Mm -hmm. makes the story. Mm -hmm. You know, in a sea of stories where we are drowning with narratives, what stands the test of time Mm -hmm. is authenticity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me illustrate through a story. Yeah. So Ratan Tata uh, was traveling by car Mm -hmm. and uh, some of his colleagues were with him and the car was on a highway. Maybe they were going from Mumbai to Nashik Mm -hmm. and the car broke down. Now, what do we do when a car breaks down? People step out for a stretch break Mm -hmm. and they want to stretch their arms and legs and the smokers welcome a smoke break. And that's exactly what started happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, But soon his colleagues realized that Mr. Tata is nowhere to be seen. So they went looking for him. Guess where they found him? Mm. He was sitting on the road, sleeves rolled up, mm. helping the driver fix the car. Wow. Now, you can write in golden letters at the reception on the wall that we treat people well, there's dignity of labor, etc. But for me, a story is not just what you say, it's what you do. Absolutely. And, and your, your actions speak much louder than words. So that's the first ingredient. Is your story authentic? Amazing. The second one Mm -hmm. is that the best storyteller about your organization or about you is not you. Mm. You can't be the spokesperson. You can't be, you know, the best story about any organization is told by its customers. Say, take the podcast, the brand called you. Mm. The listeners are the best people to tell the story. Absolutely. So we live in that world where Advertising is believed lesser. Mm. Word of mouth is believed more. Very well so said. Are we, are, are we converting every customer, every mm. stakeholder into a mm. brand ambassador? And that's what makes a good story a good story. 
Uh, the third, of course, is the mm. you know, articulation. Yeah. Then yeah. all the other storytelling elements, which is great articulation, connecting with emotions, mm. and ensuring that your story is not about you, but something that connects with people, where mm. they find something uh, in your story that resonates with them. All of these are also important, but they must come uh, later. Mm. Uh, articulation. Uh, good, great beginnings, uh, impactful ending, mm. all of that comes later. They are important, very important. Wonderful. Uh, but to me, authenticity and and ensuring that your customers or your stakeholders are your storytellers, not you. Mm. These are key. Wonderful. That you know, and, and nobody's explained this to me so well as you have done, Amin. Thank you so much. But my next question to you is: Can the art of storytelling be taught, or do a few people have it, and they can help me in writing it? <laughs> uh, it's a muscle. Okay. We are born with that muscle. Okay. We are the only species. The human species is the only species with that ability. However, to be born with something is not the same as being good with it. Mm. Uh, let me explain through a simple example. Most of us are lucky to be born with two legs. Correct. That doesn't make us marathon runners. Mm. And marathon runners are not born with six legs. Mm. They just exercise those muscles a lot more mm. than we do. The storytelling muscle is exactly like that. It's a muscle. It needs to be exercised with the right tools, frameworks, and techniques. Mm. And, it, and, and uh, it's a muscle that can be built. Mm. Uh, the idea is not... Nobody is born a great storyteller. Nobody mm. is born a great singer. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody is born a great mathematician. Mm. Uh, we are born with some genetic predispositions, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not what we are born with. Mm -hmm. It's what we do with what we are born with that makes a lot of difference. Well said. Well said. And, uh, you know, you also support people and organizations in telling their stories. Give me a few examples of the kind of uh, people you have helped and the kind of stories you have helped them sell. Well, it has a wide range of applications. So I'll, I'll take uh, perhaps the more extreme examples oh. uh, and some pretty obvious ones as well. Mm -hmm. uh, today, you know, I'm in Delhi and I'm speaking at a conference for social sector organizations mm -hmm. on fundraising. Okay. Uh, all fundraising, you know this Ashutosh, yeah. storytelling. Mm. Whether it's fundraising for startups where they raise funds from VC, VC firms mm -hmm. or Shark Tank mm -hmm. or social sector organizations mm. or fundraising is uh, storytelling. It's storytelling. So right. that's one of the areas where we work with organizations and individuals and help them take their story to a level where it can achieve its purpose. Mm. The second area that we work in, and then now I'm going to uh, cite a very interesting example where yeah. we were roped in by Star Television. Mm to work with uh, the sports commentators mm -hmm. and help the sports commentators elevate their storytelling. Right. Now, most sports commentators are not like Harsha Bhogle. Mm. Now, what I mean by that is, Harsha Bhogle went to IIMA. Mm. Uh, he has the gift of vocabulary. Most sports commentators are sports people who dropped out of school and college to pursue the passion for sport. Mm -hmm. but now they have a second career after their playing career is over. Mm. And that is uh, the second career as a commentator. Mm -hmm. Where articulation vocabulary is key. Correct. If, if, a, if a commentator on cricket match says, fantastic shot, the ball is racing to the boundary. That's not great commentary. Mm. We can all see the ball racing to the boundary. Mm. You are narrating what we can all see. Mm. You're stating the obvious. It's almost like doing radio commentary mm. on television. So is it possible for commentators to elevate their storytelling and do that real time and take people into what's happening here? Correct. So that was a great assignment. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. And, you know, it challenged us, it pushed us, mm. but it uh, also, you know, rewarded us. Mm. Uh, the other application that I'm going to share with you is we are currently working with Olympic Gold Quest. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing that for the last three, four years. Where mm. we, we are working with sports coaches and helping sports coaches improve their storytelling ability. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it important for a good sports coach to be a good storyteller? 
Well, we when we think of sports coaching, we always think about people working on backhands and forehands and techniques mm. and and shots, etc. Now, there's a physical aspect of the game, mm. but there's a whole mental aspect of the game as well. Correct. And that in that area, stories can play a big role, mm. and the coach can inspire performances and reassure people, mm. uh, apply balm after a uh, after a loss, all through. narrators amazing but are sports coaches storytellers or are they just physical uh, instructors and trainers so that's a capability that we are trying to build you're so people. right you know as you were talking it took me back i'm much older than you but took me back to listening to commentary on the radio you know where it would be you know the bowler has come in bowled is hit the shot it's running around and you know person is chasing mm-hmm. after that and those same people came initially on television and you say but why is he telling me all this i can see it well said what a great example so tell me i mean how important are anecdotes in storytelling very very important mm-hmm. uh what anecdotes do is but they are one part of the storyteller's armory or mm-hmm. you know one tool in the storyteller's toolkit mm-hmm. uh having said that they are they are as important as any other tool can be anecdotes are important because uh they while they are personal mm-hmm. we can all relate with that mm-hmm. uh imagine if i was going into a meeting with uh, the board of singapore airlines mm-hmm. one of the best ways to begin a story is would be with a personal anecdote mm-hmm. which would which would go like this Hey, uh, for this meeting, I was traveling from India by Singapore Airlines, mm. and dash dash dash. Correct. And people are waiting with bated breath for me to finish now. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, or if I was meeting the management of more supermarkets, mm. yeah, there's a supermarket chain called More Supermarkets, yeah. and if I was meeting the management team, I could begin that uh, you know conversation by saying. Yesterday, I was at Moor shopping for groceries mm. when dash dash dash, and everybody is waiting with bated breath for me to finish that sentence. Fabulous! Uh, Fabulous. You, you know, we don't leverage the power of something as simple as anecdotes in our business conversations. Well said. So, one of the questions that you know, when I was reading about you and looking at your website, I was wondering. why is the art of storytelling not taught in schools because it is such a powerful way to communicate well uh, i hope that there is a change mm-hmm. and there is a change happening mm-hmm. uh, if you look at curriculums there is mm-hmm. cbse curriculum there is icse curriculum yeah. and there is ib curriculum if you look at the ib or igcse curriculums mm-hmm. uh, they don't teach storytelling per se but um uh, it does get taught mm-hmm. in other ways mm-hmm. where uh, my kids go to an ib school mm-hmm. and uh, three times a year starting grade 1 or four times a year every quarter mm-hmm. they have to they the parents go to school and the kids have to tell a story about what they have been doing in the last quarter mm-hmm. they don't do that with powerpoint mm-hmm. they don't do that with uh, they just stand up and tell a story and they may use props they may use a project that they have built a model of something mm. but they could just do that mm. uh, by just standing up and telling a story and transporting and say you know the listener to a place and time 2 months ago where a teacher walked into the class mm. narrated an incident and and led uh, a realization or reflection mm. uh, in the student's mind i have seen that uh, you know when i interact with people from certain cultures mm-hmm. you will see that uh, they tend to have better narrative ability and mm-hmm. the reason is it's been taught through schools mm-hmm. they have had to do a lot of uh, narrative work or presentation work mm-hmm. uh, in schools and colleges mm-hmm. and by the time they get to the managerial roles or leadership roles mm-hmm. they don't need a training program for yeah. that you know i wish this you know the work that i do didn't exist uh that would be utopia for me where we didn't have to run these training programs or workshops or do mm. this work because then people would be good storytellers per se 
you know, the tragedy is we think that storytelling is important for audiences. Mm. That, you know, we do good work and we, we should be able to communicate that work to the audiences. Actually, if you've done good work and your, if your work is up there and your story is falling short, mm. it's not just an injustice to the audience. First, mm. it is an injustice to your own good work that you've done. Correct. Correct. Well said. You know, I've, I've had this debate over the last three and a half decades with people, which is that if you don't talk about what you have done, nobody's going to talk about it for you. And the general thing we have in our country is let someone else find out what I'm doing rather than my talk about it. Well, both are good, but both need to happen in conjunction. Correct. Uh, others need to tell your story and you should, in fact, infect them with enthusiasm for your story so that they become champions and ambassadors. Mm -hmm. At the same time, what you said is very true. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to paraphrase that. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to borrow an a, a, a old quote or a proverb from Africa. Mm -hmm. So there's this old African proverb and it comes from the jungles. And it goes something like this. And you triggered it, by the way, mm -hmm. by saying what you did. Mm -hmm. It goes something like this. If the lion doesn't tell its own story, yeah. hunter does. Yeah. So <laughs> we have to take charge of our narrative. And uh, I remember an incident um, where the Times of India as a newspaper entered the Chennai market. Mm -hmm. And instead of telling people through communication why they should buy Times of India, they started telling the story about Hindu. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was their competitor, the other newspaper, mm -hmm. and why people should not buy the Hindu. Mm -hmm. So instead of Hindu telling its story, now Times of India was telling the story that Hindu is a boring newspaper. Uh, uh, it's long format stories. It puts people to sleep. It's too detail oriented, mm -hmm. etc. And uh, uh, so their entire communication campaign was not about Times of India itself. Okay. It was about the Hindu. Okay. And I remember... Uh, I was working at Ogilvy, the ad agency that was handling Hindu's uh, communications uh, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting at the Hindu's board office in Chennai, having those discussions. And, you know, Hindu is very shy. Yeah. They don't do a lot of communication. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, talk about. Uh, but this is one time that they did have to respond because somebody else was telling their story mm -hmm. on their behalf. And that was, in fact, one of the last pieces of work that I did in advertising before I quit and started Storywalas. And I'm very proud of it. Uh, so we we did take charge of our story then. Mm. Fantastic. So let me move on. Uh, you also say that we believe that great stories happen to those who can tell them. Oh, yeah. Uh, tell me about how, how, or give me an example of how this works. Uh, well, the world is at story wars with each other and, you know, the better story wins or the better yeah. storyteller wins. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that uh, happen in both good and bad situations. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll not pass a judgment on, you know, storytelling is a tool. It's like, it's like science. Absolutely. You can make medicine with science. Uh, you can make bombs with science. Correct. Storytelling is also a narrative tool like that. You can make the world better using storytelling or uh, but look around you and you will see that the politicians who tell better stories win, uh, the businessmen who tell better stories win, and the brands who tell better stories win in the marketplace, and the uh, startups who are telling better, or startup founders who tell better stories uh, win the funding rounds. Mm. Uh, so everywhere, whether it is spiritual leaders, political leaders, uh, or business leaders, the better storytellers are winning. Mm. Uh, but more simpler examples would be Mm. Uh, uh, an organization called Slam Out Loud, yeah. mm -hmm. which works with kids, uh, the most disenfranchised kids in uh, India, mm -hmm. and helps them by giving them a voice, mm. by using art education mm. to teach them poetry so that kids can become poets, mm. so that children can become artists and express their voice. Mm. Now, during the pandemic years, the last two years have been tough. A lot of social sector organizations were going through a funding crisis. Mm. We worked with Slam Out Loud and brainstormed with them and helped them run a fundraising campaign mm. that helped them raise one crore rupees wow. during the pandemic mm. and sustain the work 
that they do. Mm. Uh, to me, again, you know, it's a good demonstration of the idea that those who tell better stories are able to sustain themselves and mm. win in the marketplace. And when I say marketplace, I'm deliberately choosing a social sector organization mm. uh, uh, example because those are also marketplaces of some kind. Very interesting. So my next question to you, and I think I have time for one, maybe two questions. Uh, when I was again looking at your uh, website and reading about you, you have three circles, which is stage, tech, and business. And you speak about the magic that happens at the interaction of these three circles. Tell me about these. Well, you know, every business today is tech business. Correct. And I also say this, every business is also shoe business. Mm -hmm. So let me say that slightly differently. If you are in business, mm -hmm. storytelling is also your business. Correct. And uh, maybe two, three examples may mm -hmm. illustrate this. Yeah. One of the biggest innovation challenges in India is Tata Open Innovation Challenge. Yeah. Where uh, there's big prize money. Mm -hmm. uh, the innovation uh, challenge is to solve big business problems, mm -hmm. most often mm -hmm. using technology. But the way the prize money gets delivered is how you tell that story on the stage. Correct. So you see technology solving business problems and the, you know, the funding happens or the winners are announced depending on how well you tell the story on stage. Mm -hmm. So we've had the pleasure of working and the privilege of working mm -hmm. uh, with some of these uh, technology people, mm -hmm. innovators, mm -hmm pioneers and help them tell their better tell the story in a better way mm. so that they can win the mandate and bring about the change Amazing. there is a saying in hindi jungle mein mor nacha kisne kisne dekha? Dekha? Uh, which roughly translates as the peacock may have danced in the in the forest beautifully but who who saw it mm. an idea today mm. without funding mm. is like the peacock dancing in the forest and it's the stage that gets you the funding. It should not be so, but that's how it is. That's how and it's works. imperative that even a pioneer, even an innovator, even an R&D guy mm. is not just filing patents, but is able to tell a story in order for that idea to get funded. So we also work with Accenture's Startup Challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a very simple recent example or two would be uh, a startup called Coulomb. Mm -hmm. AI works in the EV battery space. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I was invited to work with the founder. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a delight to work with the founder and help them elevate their storytelling. They just got into Y Combinator, which is the biggest startup mm -hmm. accelerator in the world. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, that's great success. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. So my last question to you, I mean, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. What would you say are three lessons of storytelling uh, from your own life that you would want our viewers and listeners to take away? And you've already given us one, which I will take as the fourth, which is authenticity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would also say that humility matters mm -hmm. in the way you tell that story. Mm -hmm. The tone of voice is important. Correct. It's not just what we say but also how we say something. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, where a lot of chest thumping is happening today, mm -hmm. uh, authenticity uh, in your humility mm -hmm. is also important. Not, mm -hmm. not greenwashing, not uh, posturing. Uh, it needs to come from within, but mm -hmm. uh, a certain element of humility in the way you tell stories mm -hmm. is important. The last big lesson that I think and that's not just storytelling, but life. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, I, my entire journey yeah. has taught me is that uh, hard work beats talent uh, or a combination of hard work and talent uh, goes a lo much longer way than sheer talent alone. Mm -hmm. And good guys do win. Mm -hmm. uh, let me illustrate actually through a story. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can close the conversation with sure. a story. This is a lesser known story. Most people don't know the story. Mm -hmm. It's about a legend from India called Lata Mangeshkar. Mm -hmm. Now, this 
this happened in 2007 and the story is from 2007 mm -hmm. lata mangeshkar was already uh, in her 70s mm -hmm. and she had cut back on singing mm -hmm. she was not singing anymore uh, or being very selective with mm -hmm. song mm -hmm. and there was a movie director called there is a movie director called rakesh om prakash mehra mm -hmm. and rakesh om prakash mehra was collaborating with uh, ar rahman mm -hmm. on a movie mm -hmm. This movie is called Rang De Basanti. Mm -hmm. And A.R. Rahman was not just composing the songs for the movie. He was also uh, doing the background score. Mm -hmm. Now, to do the background score, you have to see every scene and Correct. compose music mm -hmm. for that scene. If it's a sad scene, sad music there. Mm -hmm. if, if it's a patriotic scene, patriotic music there. Uh, and so on and so forth. Now, there's a scene in the movie that both of them saw on the editing table. And they felt that something is missing there. And that's the scene where a boy's dead body comes wrapped mm -hmm. in, the, in the national flag. Mm -hmm. This is the pilot who flies the MiG-21 mm -hmm. uh, an aircraft and dies in an accident. And mm -hmm. the body is received by his old mother. Mm -hmm. uh, the old mother in the movie is played by Wahida Rahman. Mm -hmm. And the the pilot is played by Madhavan. And, uh, you know, while composing the background score, they felt that there's something missing here. Mm -hmm. The movie was almost complete. Mm -hmm. But Rehman felt a song would do justice because a song can convey emotions like dialogues cannot. Correct. Correct. So while the movie was almost complete, they decided to shoot a song. So they wrote a song. Uh, they invited Prasoon Joshi to write a song. And Rehman composed for it. And they were wondering who could do justice to the song as a singer. And uh, both of them agreed that it would be Lata Mangeshkar. So they approached Lata Mangeshkar and explained the situation, explained that Wahida Rahman is playing the mother and described the scene. Uh, while uh, Lataji had stopped singing and mm -hmm. cut back on work, she agreed to lend her voice to the mm -hmm. song. And uh, it was decided that the song would be recorded on the 15th of the month. Mm -hmm. Around... 7th or 8th of the month, Rakesh gets a phone call and uh, Lata says, uh, I will come to Chennai mm. for the recording. Now, initially it was planned that the recording would be done in Mumbai because that's where Lataji stays Correct. and they didn't want to trouble her. They didn't want her to travel. But see, she understood the importance of the music composer's freedom and uh, Rahman has a studio in Chennai. Uh, if Rahman had to come to Mumbai, he would have to hire a studio and that would mean certain constraints so she said i will come to chennai Amazing. Hmm. now uh, and, and i want to come to chennai a few days earlier now again they didn't understand why she is saying that maybe they thought you know she wants to meet up with some friends she hasn't been to chennai so they said yeah yeah please come she takes a flight to chennai lands at the airport there's a hotel room booked for her but she doesn't go to the hotel she goes straight to the studio mm. and spends hours at the studio mm. listening to the track again and again and again mm. and then she asked for the track on a cassette mm -hmm. not an mp3 player not a digital but on a cassette and tape recorder and then she takes it back to the hotel room and while she's leaving she says i'll practice this for the next three four days mm. and let you know when i'm ready Ashutosh, let that sink in. Hmm. Here's someone who's been sinking for 60 years. She had six decades of singing experience hmm. and many awards and Bharat Ratna to her credit. And she is saying, I will practice this for the next three, four months and let you know when I'm ready. Hmm. And then she goes back to the hotel room and practice that, that song. On the day of the recording, she's the first one to arrive at the studio. Hmm. And, you know, she's given a, a chair to sit on and she says, no, no, no. If you know singing, you know, you, you know that breath work is important. So she says, I'll stand and sing. And there's a, there's a glass of warm water and a bottle kept there. She, they start recording at six in the morning. The recording goes on till about 12 or one. It's six hours. Mm. And one of the reasons, there are many reasons why, it, but it takes long to record the song. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other reasons why it took longer is whenever she thought she, she had made a mistake or she was not happy with the way she had sounded, most modern singers, they record the line or the word again. Mm -hmm. And, then, you know, using technology, you can mm -hmm. fix the glitches. Here, 
Lata Mangeshwar, she, she would go back to the beginning and start all over from the start. Mm. Till 12 o'clock, she was standing. Mm. 76 years old. Six yeah. hours. She's standing. And all she's had is warm water. Yeah. Legends are made like this. There are at least 200 singers who have great voices. Correct. Like Lata Mangeshwar in India. But it's not talent. It's hard work and talent. That takes yes, sir. Well said. Well said. What a great story to end with. Yeah. And, you. you know, I mean, uh, you know, your comment of if you are in biz, business, storytelling is your business and you have to be in that business. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for talking to me and telling me about better storytellers win. And I hope a lot of our viewers and listeners will appreciate what a powerful message there is in this comment of better storytellers win. Thank you for talking to me about your journey as a story, Bala, about your amazing uh, experiences that and, and, uh, and the whole examples of any and now in the number of anecdotes you gave us. And finally, thank you for your wonderful lessons and the story of Lata Mangeshkarji. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.